Alright, and uh, then on um, next Wednesday, the 31st, we got Vicky Tube Dumps on the show. Alright, uh, now that we're done putting ourselves over, it is not a great day for wrestling um, as we lost a true icon, a true legend, um, somebody a pioneer in pro wrestling and WWE as a whole, and that is superstar Billy Graham. Um, Scooter, could you tell us about Billy Graham? All right. If I were to say to you, you can pull the bumper off a Cadillac, Jack. You probably think Hulk Hogan, but no, Billy Graham is the one who said that first, and Billy Graham who said this a lot. Uh, almost Hulk, Hulk almost became an entire clone of Superstar Billy Graham, but and Jesse Ventura. Uh, and Jesse Ventura, yes. Uh, Eldridge Wayne Coleman, better known as the Superstar Billy Graham, not the televangelist. Uh, started wrestling in. God, do I have Yeah, okay. Uh, born in June 1943 in Phoenix. Uh, of Native American ancestry. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, was a Golden Gloves, uh, fight amateur in, uh, the late 50s, uh, tried out for the Calgary Stampede in the Canadian Football League. Uh, uh, and then he would try, uh, go into bodybuilding. Uh, he would train uh, intensively at the Gold Gym in Santa Monica, California, uh, where, of all the people he would train with, one man you might have heard of, uh, his name is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, Schwarzenegger is a very big fan of, uh, of Superstar Billy Graham. Uh, there is a lot when in terms of when Billy Graham starts wrestling. He starts wrestling in the late 60s, the very early 60s, early 70s. Uh, trained under... Uh, Stu Hart. I did not know that. I did not know that Billy Graham was a student of the uh, of the dungeon. Me neither. I think he's best known for being the Dord uh, WWE champion ever. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, believe me, I'm gonna get to that. Uh, she spent a lot of time in uh, California with the NWA. Uh, worked with, uh, a team in the late, se mid 70s with Pat Patterson, uh, along with, uh, Ray Stevens and High Chief Peter Maivita. My, my via. God damn it. Uh, Take uh Graham, <laughs> Graham would spend the mid 70s mostly. In the AWA, uh, up in Ferngagne's territory, uh, with the Crusher, the Bruiser, Wahoo McDaniel, Billy Robinson, uh, Ken Patera, Ivan Koloff, uh, leave, to, uh, it spent a year in Japan in 74, very interesting, uh, and Billy Graham was Ric Flair's substitute, uh, up and down the East Coast, for the NWA appearances after Flair uh, was in that infamous plane crash. Mm. But, of course, let's talk about Billy Graham's most notable accomplishment, and that is he became, as Jay said, the third, technically third, for... One better two, two, three, four. Yeah. He would, if you're 
if you, if you want to play semantics, he's technically the sixth WWF champion uh, in history. Uh, the World Wide Wrestling Federation, though, out of everybody that Bruno San Martino defended that title against from December 10th, 1973 to April 29th, 1977, be a cakewalk for Bruno. And on April 30th, Billy Graham would end that almost four year reign of uh, December 10th, 1973 to April 30th, 1977. Uh, Bruno, that was Bruno's first run. Bruno was champion for seven years, lost to Ivan Koloff. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 I mean, regardless, it's still really fucking huge. I mean, God. I mean, I mean, can you imagine seeing that today? Oh. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, after that, uh, Graham would he would spend uh, how much time? Uh, fortunately, he would spend less than a year, a little, a little under a year, as WWF champion, as Bob Backlund would defeat him. Uh, for the down WWF championship, um, and then of course it would go to Antonio Inoki. It would be vacated back to Backlund, Iron Sheik, and then we're into Hogan there. But uh, Graham would leave the WWF uh, in '83 out of uh, want because he wanted to retire the superstar gimmick. And Vince, uh, Vince Senior, did not uh, did not want him to become a face. Billy Graham was also a very, very good heel. Uh, Graham would go back to the AWA and the NWA from '83 to '86, and then in '80, uh, late '86, Billy Graham would return to the WWF one more time. Now, as a face. Uh, there, there are so many, oh, great, oh, wow, it's Hulk Hogan, um, Superstar Billy Graham stories, uh, Graham is the first superstar in WWF history to have his surgery shown on WWF television as they showed, uh, his hip replacement, which is really, really odd because there's only one other man that's wrestled after having a hip replacement, and that, that was Roddy Piper. Uh, I believe Undertaker wrestled after a hip replacement as well. Not a full hip replacement. Oh, no. Uh... Graham would essentially, unfortunately, falter into uh, mid-card territory. Uh, he'd find himself uh, at, Surv uh, at Survivor Series uh, against, uh, I believe he was on part of Hogan's team. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, and then after his, uh, in-ring WDF career, he took to the commentary booth, uh, and then in 89 left, uh, and retired for good. Uh, uh, Graham would return to the WWE in 2004 when... The Hall of Fame was once again revived. Uh, he's part of that 2004 class. Um, inducted the night before WrestleMania 20 by then World Heavyweight Champion Triple H, uh, who Graham had helped become 
a, uh, you know, people like break into the business. Um, Graham will then go on to sell his Hall of Fame ring to purchase anti-rejection medications for his liver transplant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's talk about the impact that he's had on football. Yes, um, yes. You know, honestly, if there was no superstar Billy Graham, we would not have a Hulk Hogan, Jesse Ventura. Um, you could even see... Steve Austin, Scott Steiner. Uh, I mean, even Macho Man. I, yeah, even... Yeah, even Macho Man. Oh, God. And, you know, obviously, and he was one of the first heel WWE champions that held it for a substantial amount of time. Um, uh, and he also was the first ever superstar to win the title by cheating. Right. So, you know, you have a... In WWE, you have a history maker right there. And, you know, obviously, it will be known for years to come what um, what Superstar has done for this business. And you can't say enough uh, great things about that. I, I did have the pleasure of meeting him uh, twice, and um, he, was, he was good. He was a nice guy. Um, so, yeah, um, honestly, it just sucks, but, you know, he did have a full life and a full career, and that doesn't, right, Scooter? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say that, there's, there's a lot of other stuff, if you, you know, if you're, you know, if you're a Dark Side of the Ring fan, you'll know what I'm referring to. We're not going to get into that here. Um, but Billy Graham, uh, regardless of what he... Regardless of personal issues, Billy Graham is the prototype for what a wrestler could and should be. Absolutely. Have talent, have a, a bag full of talent, a head full of charisma, and having straight sight into obtaining what they wanted further in their career. Billy Graham, the superstar, who I'm, my God, yeah, I did, I did, I did meet him at a, at a, at a, my first ever, uh, first ever AWA show in 1990. Uh, yeah, same night I met Lou Albano, Sunny Beach, uh, God, such, such, such a, such a nice, such a nice human being. It's, we, we, we will miss the superstar. Obviously, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the friends and family of superstar Billy Graham. 